Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to install Link Warden. Now it kind of sounds like Vault Warden, and you're like, man, that's a password manager, but what's Link Warden? Well, you can probably guess where it's all about links. So like your bookmarks, any any links that you want to save, you can save it here and kind of make a nice dashboard um, for whoever where, where it's like, hey, it's your company or your family, and you want to share all your links in regards to, you know, either fun stuff you, you found or other YouTube videos like my Home Lab series. Um, or just really funny, you know, tech joke videos that you find on YouTube about, hey, you know, I'm going to make this video and then anime version. Um, no, really, it's, it really depends on what you want to do. But you can do anything you want with it. So, but we'll show you how to do it. So this video uh, is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content want to sponsor me or send me some free swagger hardware, let me know. My email is in the description below. So let's get started, guys. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. So we'll log into our server. Um, let's into I think fifty three, one fifty three, guys. Um, yeah, it's called Link Warden. All right. So what we'll do here is install a Docker. Um, this is another Docker image that we can use here. So uh, easy. So we'll get the Docker repository downloaded. Um, here, uh, repo. Yeah. And then we will yum install docker ce, docker ce. All right, while that installs, we will go to our GitLab project that contains our DNS service. So um, this is a nice kind of repo project that I created that has a GitLab pipeline that will update. When we update this file, we'll push it out to our DNS server and update our DNS. So make sure we update the serial number and then add our entry down here for link warden. All right. In a and 172.61.53 and we will commit this add a link warden commit all right so that's committed we'll the pipeline will run no biggie link warden all right so we can go take a look link warden um you know has kind of all your links you can you can see it uh we'll go to the github real quick which should have their uh, Docker stuff. So give me a second. I can't remember why I found it. Getting started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting started. Self hosting. Can no self hosting. Um, yeah. So if you're using Docker to install, install Docker. Install Get. Oh well. Guess we should install Get, guys. Yum. Why install Get? Um, I don't think it's installed. So actually, I would have. I would have needed to install it. You know. All right. But it's a pretty quick install too. Give it a second, 42, 43. All right, here we go. Um, but don't forget to actually uh, start your Docker um, and we will enable Docker to all add it. Docker. Okay, so should be pretty simple. Let's uh, copy that, paste that, boom, easy. Um, yeah, we'll CD to the directory because that makes perfect sense, yep. And touch.env. Um, I'm just gonna vi.env. I don't need to touch it. This will this will this will automatically create it. Okay. And then what do we have here? We got this stuff over here. Okay, okay. Um, we will paste that in here. Okay, so we got a very sensitive secret. Um, you should probably change this. I'll I'll, I'll leave it as default because it's humorous in, in, an, in an actual tech video. I'm gonna just leave it as default, but you should change it. Your Postgres password. Also change this. Um, your URL. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll actually change this one. I'll actually change this one. Um, link one and dot tracking not local. But you should change the other two. Just just so you know. Um, but I'm gonna leave it. <clears throat> and let's see. And then run it. All right. So one other thing. Oh, so uh, let's take a look here. Docker compose .yaml. Let's let's take a look at the Docker file. So it spins up Postgres databases. We'll use the env variable for Postgres password, which is I think was my Postgres password or whatever it was, um, to connect to this database. Um, and opens on port three thousand. The volumes will be from the data. We'll create data volume, uh, a data directory, um, and yeah. Pretty simple. Yeah, let's do it. Docker compose up and we'll detach it. Oh, Dawn. All right. Guys, we got to install Docker compose. So we'll grab it from their GitHub 
github.com slash docker slash compose releases and we will download their release. Um, and then we got to make sure it's executable. So chmod plus x and then the executable location. Now we can do talk compose up guys. Boom, see, easy. When in doubt, just read the read the error and then um, do what do install the stuff that you need to install. <laughs> All right, so we'll give it a few seconds here for this to run. Um, it actually looks like it does a little bit of a build here too. So we'll build it. No biggie. We'll wait for it. Um, if you are inclined and you don't want to do it via Docker, you can also have there's manual installation where you can install run use npx. Um, and then set up an actual database here and then yarn start it essentially. Um, but Docker is so much easier guys. It's so much easier. All right. Where are we with this? Still fetching, still fetching, building fresh packages. Oh man, this is probably gonna be the longest build here. 50 seconds, 51. I like how there's a count, count, count here. A done in 40 some seconds. All right, easy, easy. Now it's gonna, it's, it's essentially gonna run the, the command. So you can see how it says run yawn, mpx playwright, app clean, yawn cache clean. Um, I mean, that's essentially what, what it's doing here where it runs that in this um, manual steps, but it just runs it in the container. Um, so similar. All right, there's only so many jokes that I can say while this is while this is installing, guys. <laughs> Maybe it's almost done. Yarn cache, we got a yarn cache up in here. All right, see now it's now it's gonna finish here in a few seconds. Oh, we got the prism generate. All right, you know what? We'll fast forward the video. All right, about two minutes later, approximately, maybe less than two minutes, we got it installed. So. Now we can do a Docker PSA. We can see that it is coming up um, and we will look at it on port 3000. So we're gonna do HTTP link warden dot dragon dot local on port 3000. So now we will uh, sign up for our account because we kind of need an account. If we don't have an account, how can we log in, right? Um, yeah, so we'll sign up. All right, now we will log in. And now you kind of have your dashboard, you can put your favorite links, you can create new things. So um, we can just give you kind of a brief thing. We can add a collection, which is just directory and you can name it whatever. And in your correction, you can add links. So for example, we can do like this link warden. Uh, you can put in collection, add, and now it is part of this collection. Um, so you can see, you know, we got our collections, we got our links, you can pin stuff. We can not click that, but that's okay. But we can go to like all links and you can save all the things. You can also do tags and whatnot, but we should be able to click this. Um, the neat thing about this, is it actually does like an archiving thing. So you can actually see like the link in a screenshot. Like if, if you were to look at it, this is the PDF version of that link. Um, so you can actually see what that page is before you even go to that page. Um, and then you can actually click on it and actually go to that page. But, um, it looks like it does do a screenshot and a PDF. If you wanted to see it in PDF form, um, it will save your link in a PDF, um, which is actually pretty cool. Honestly, I didn't realize that. So, um, obviously you can't click stuff like that, but you get a, it's, it's going to be a screen grab on your link, um, when you add it. So. There you go, guys. That's how you set up Link Warden. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.